so that the topic is the OSI model. What is OSI? Open system interconnect. It is not operating system. It is open system interconnect. This OSI model, okay, is a nothing but a, a kind of networking model. It contains a different set of rules or different set of protocols, which is useful for a communicating from one device to another device. It is a reference model. So actually there is no organization use OSA model directly means like I am communicating from my laptop to uh, google.com, facebook.com to my servers or one, one system to another system. That is my system is using TCP IP model, not OSA model. But why should we learn the OSA model? Irrespective of what model you are using, what network types you are using, okay, what network protocols you are using, we can able to understand and create, maintain, troubleshoot the network related issues. Okay, we can want to understand how the network communication is going on from the top to bottom or bottom to top. This OSA model will help you. Or you want to maintain the network in a different uh, ways like a uh, application related or maybe a uh, encryption related or maybe connectivity related or authentication related or authorization related or maybe uh, uh, addressing related so we can able to maintain each and every things as a separate separate we can able to troubleshoot any issue is occur so we can able to understand on which part of network is actually which kind of protocol path or which part of network is actually having an issue so that we are getting like this. So we can able to troubleshoot using that understanding. OK, so this is open system interconnect. It contains seven layers. And this is a model is standardized by ISO International Organization for Standardization. So what is the OSI? Open system interconnect. Open system interconnect. It is a, a networking model. It is a reference model with the seven layers. And the seven layers are application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer, network layer, and data link layer, and physical layer. Maybe some of you are read in a uh, top to bottom, some are read from the bottom to top. Like uh, in certain test books, they may like this physical layer, data link layer, network layer, transport layer, session layer, presentation layer, and application layer. Which one is correct? Is application layer to physical layer or physical layer to application layer? Guys, actually, both are right. Because when you are sending that is application layer to physical layer when you are receiving means your physical layer to application layer but in delsa na kin ped ani cheppesi enduku gatteve nannu tine tappudu kuda panchal vetkutta anto eh that is danger okay so here it is the application layer to physical layer physical layer to application layer the both way of learning is same on so there is no difference but thing is when you are sending then you are receiving right so there is once you are sent then there is a receiving end is there okay so without sending there is no receiving right so that's why it is the people will follow always from the application layer to physical layer but the layer one is physical layer layer two is data link layer layer three is a network layer Layer four is transport layer. Layer five is physical layer, and uh, sorry, layer four is transport layer. Layer five session layer. Layer six presentation layer. Layer seven is application layer. Okay, so we have to read always from the application layer to physical layer. That is a best practice. If in case you are already habituated to tell 
from physical layer to application layer, it is also OK. There is no problem in it. The layer numbers are like this order, correct layer numbers only. Don't worry. The first three layers called a software layers. First three layers, we call it as a software layers. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer, including the transport layer is also is a part of software layer only. OK. And of course, um, point is what is meant by the software layer? It means your system application, your system is do all this work. OK. All the work of application, presentation, session and transport work will be done in the your device only itself by the software of the device. And remaining is the connectivity. Uh, all this kind of stuff like a IP address part connectivities and all this done by the remaining layers like a network layer, data link layer, physical layer. There is a, a hardware devices representation is there. So then we call it as it is hardware layers. And already when we are discussing about a networking devices, as I said, hub is a layer one device that is a physical layer device. Switch is a data link layer device means layer two device router is a layer three device which is nothing but a network layer okay either possible try to understand the layers and remember it if not by heart the layers don't worry guys but don't interchange the layer thing either top to bottom bottom to top by heart it okay so that's the point so again yeah uma devi Came and tell me. So accidentally, I have raised my hand. No problem. So anyway, I know you are came. Okay. Good. Okay. That is the point, guys. Application layer, presentation layer, transport layer, network layer, data link layer, physical layer. Read it, understand it, or by heart it. I don't worry, but that is important things. Okay. And the part of application layer, next we are going to discuss each one of the layers one by one. But the point is um, there is a inside application layer, is uh, there is a, we have to discuss about the protocols and their port numbers. So Instead of going to start with an application layer, what is application layer and protocols port numbers and back to the protocols and port numbers, it is bigger challenge. So what I'm doing is, okay, I'm going to discuss protocols first, then we'll go into each and every layers, okay? So here it is, you have a seven layers. The physical layer is all about physical connectivity. Like you are connecting with the wire, wirelessly or uh, using cat cable you are connecting or using a fiber optical cable you are connecting it is about your physical layer only the data link layer you have an nic you have a switch to connect the devices okay when you send a packet to the destination the destination will check if a packet is good or corrupted that is also happens at a data link layer OK, and what is a network layer? You are assigning an IP address and you are telling your device to how to reach the destination or the router, which is actually shows your uh, how to reach the destination. OK, if you are want to communicate between the two devices within the local network, so their network ID is important. But when you are communicating different networks, so then how to go to the different network through the default gateway that is also decided by the network layer only. OK, the IP addresses routing information will be available at a network layer. And transport layer, the transport layer is when you are sending a data with a huge data, it is they will segment the data. They chop the data into small, small parts and different protocols we use in the communication some type of protocols are TCP type protocols. Some are UDP type protocols. So 
there is a encapsulation tcp type protocols under tcp encapsulation udp type protocols under udp encapsulation segmenting data the data pieces segmented data their sequence numbering okay and flow control information will be in the transport layer the session layer so guys when i open a web browser and try to connect a w3schools.com and the request has to go to w3schools.com and returns in a information and load it till that time the session has to be maintained so in session layer when you are sending a request so the session will be established okay session will be established for example i open w3schools.com it won't ask you username and password so anonymous authentication is there for example i want to uh, access uh, this what is this whatsapp when i try to access it will ask username and password right so where this authentication happens at session layer only the session layer will tell can i connect or not connect what is your authentication anonymous authentication or there may be a user and password it is also checked so it is established a session maintain the session till the session is completed it maintain the session it maintain the session and once session completed it terminate the session okay and while it is transmitting like for example i request a remote server to download an application or download some files so then it will save your session id so then with your session only it will able to download it okay if you open a, a website, the website contains so many information. It is available inside a web server. OK. In a different places, right? With your session only, the content will be delivered to you. OK, so this authorization, authentication and authorization. This is yours and where is this? OK authentication and authorization uh, uh, of a connectivity and uh, delivering of uh, information like a sending request and response of uh, content will be happened with the session layer only. okay the presentation layer see so your data is in the different formats like it can be a text format it can be in a picture format. It can be GIF format. It can be any format it is. So the data will be convert into uh, ASCII level format and binary format. So then your system will understand that one. If that is presentation layer, like a encapsulation. Sorry, sorry. Encoding, decoding. Data will be compressed in the presentation layer. Compression, decompression. Data will be <coughs> data will be encrypted. So if I am using HTTPS, so it is HTTPS means data is encrypted. If I use HTTP, data won't be encrypted. Okay, encrypted connectivities encrypting the data is happens in the presentation layer. And coming to the application layer, in application, see this is I am using a web browser to connect to my website, right? So I open a website from the web browser. For example, I use a putty. This is a putty application used to connect my remote Linux system using SSH or Telnet protocol. OK, even including uh, AWS EC2 instance, you can use a putty, the Linux instance, you can able to connect with the putty. OK. Putty used to connect remote system using Telnet or, or SSH type of protocols. OK, so it is a client application and I can use a certain protocols with that client or you can use a FileZilla. I, I think I don't have. Yeah. This is a FileZilla application. It is related to the FTP protocol. So FileZilla is a client-side application to connect a remote file servers with FTP protocols. So the 
all application layer is all about your client side application and server side application means server side means it's a web server application or file server application mail server application like that so client side server side application to connect and access and the protocols will dealing with it okay here i am using what protocol HTTP or HTTPS protocol for a web access? OK, right? FileZilla, I said that is FTP protocol. Mail communication, it is SMTP, POP3 or IMAP protocol. Remote access, I have a remote Linux server. I want to access it, SSH protocol. I have a remote Windows server. I want to access it using RDP protocol. I have a time that is time is setting automatically to my system from the time server. From the time server, it is. It is all protocol dealing, dealing of protocols, type of communication, and uh, the based on the communication, the client side application, server side application. These are all comes under application layer only. Okay. So these are the points that is what I'm trying to say before I start all these things. OK, what is a OSA model? And we have a seven layers. I explained from bottom to top and finally I came to the application layer in the part of application layer. I said protocols, right? So what is this protocols? Once again, we'll see the protocol set of rules. The protocols defines what type of communication. Protocols defines what type of communication. So you're saying communication, but what type? Is a web related, right? You want to access a website? You want to upload or download in a file? Or you want to send and receive emails? Or maybe you want to get authentication? In the in a network related authentication, or maybe you want to do that remote access kind of uh, communication. You want to, you have a remote server. You want to access from here. This is a remote access related communication, or you want to synchronize the time. Okay, or you want to uh, connect your database server, MySQL server, or Oracle SQL server, or you want to connect your uh, uh, one application to another application using some uh, type of uh, communication inside. OK, so it is about what type of communication you want to do. It. OK, so these protocols defines what type of communication, how this client or a server understand. What is the communication between them? You are a client. And there is somewhere is a server. You send a request to the server, but server, how it will understand? What is your request? What do you want? How server will understand? Based on the protocol. The servers and clients understand what is the request. Okay. By the protocol. And you're requesting web access. You are requesting ping access, requesting mail access. So what type of request it is to understand? Understand what is the request from client to servers? Yeah, it is simple. I, I actually. This is actually good one, so this is. It defines what type of communication it is. It defines what type of communication is. OK, what is a protocol? Protocol set of rules actually say protocols defines what type of communication. OK, the protocols, each and every protocol are having a, a specific port number. Either one port number or two port numbers for a protocol. Okay. Either one port number or two port numbers for a protocol. And protocols representation of type of communication. Then what is the port? 
So our systems, when they are sending and receiving the connectivity and communication, instead of protocol, we use port. OK, port addresses for making much ASCII format kind of stuff, easy ASCII. So inside your system, when you are communicating with certain protocol, automatically protocol convert into port number based on your type of communication it is. I listed out some of the most common protocols used in the network. OK, in the network, so it is the most common protocols and their port numbers. One is HTTP, another one is HTTPS. HTTP port number is 80, HTTPS is 443. What is the difference between HTTP and HTTPS? It is also most common question in the interviews, guys. HTTP and HTTPS. What is the difference? HTTPS is our SSL type. It means data is encrypted. The HTTP, if your server is HTTP and the data is not encrypted. If your server is HTTPS, then it is the, the connectivity is HTTPS type. It means data is encryption. If you see, it is also HTTPS. If you see, this is also HTTPS. Nowadays, the most of the websites we are using are HTTPS. Very few are HTTP. Why? Because of the data which is we are transferring from one place to another place. If you are using HTTP, data is not encrypted. If anybody capture your data, they can able to see the data what you are transmitting from one place to another place, and it is sometimes compromise data integrities. OK, so we need a HTTPS means what are the server data when it is sending over the Internet so the data is encrypted so people cannot able to if they have even they capture the data, they cannot see what the data contained. OK, even if you open a WhatsApp, then you can see it is end to end encryption. It means data will be visible to you and data is visible to the recipient, that other side person. But in between the data is even some people capture your data, they cannot able to read the data that is called a data encryption. OK, so next one is. FTP. File transfer protocol to upload and download the files to the remote server. Okay. 2021 port number. SSH, Telnet, RDP are used for a remote access purpose. SSH and Telnet are CLI based connectivity. CLI based connectivities to connect your remote Linux or Unix systems, or sometimes you want to connect certain remote devices like a Cisco routers and Cisco switches views SSH or Telnet. SSH is by default encrypted protocol. Telnet is not encryption. By the by default, the Telnet is don't use any encryption to connect. But SSH is it will encrypt the data. RDP remote desktop protocol. If I have a Windows server or a Windows client, a remote Windows system is there. I want to access the entire desktop environment from my PC. I can connect with the RDP protocol. The port number is 3389. Of course, the data is encrypted format only. SSH, sorry, SMTP used for sending a mails. It's outgoing mail kind of stuff, OK? SMTP is for user to send a mail. Port number is 25. POP3 is 110. IMAP version 4 is 143. This POP3 and IMAP are used to retrieve the mails. If you open your Gmail, OK? If you are open your Gmail and you will receive. So I'm opening my Gmail. So I send a request automatically. The I send a request to my Gmail server to load my mails into my screen. OK, so 
automatically it will happen. When I create a mail and send a mail, that is SMTP to SMTP protocol to send a mail. To retrieve the mail, I use POP3R IMAP. Okay. So when we are discussing about uh, Outlook, that time I will discuss difference between POP3 and IMAP also. TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, port number is 69. It is used for remote configurations. Remote configuration files upload, download, backup, kind of stuff. Okay. So remote installations, remote configurations, I use TFTP. DHCP, we can assign an IP address to the clients automatically. So we discussed that one, how to assign an IP address just before the IP address assignment is either manually can configure or automatically can configure from the DHCP server, right? So this is a DHCP protocol used to configure IP address to the devices automatically. Port number is 67. 68 DNS 53 port number is 53 it gives IP addresses of a specific domain host kind of stuff it means when I open uh, www.javatpoint.com right I open www.javatpoint.com and it displays a it, it displaying a, a web page right but what happened? All communications by IP address only. But I don't know IP address of this Java T point. I didn't give an IP address, right? I given a name, www.java T point name I given. I didn't give it an IP address. But how can I get connected to the Java T point? Because there is a DNS server from my system. Request go to the DNS server. The DNS server search for a www.javatpoint.com's IP address, it find and return the IP address to me. Then I can able to connect it to www.javatpoint.com. Okay, NTP network time protocol, network time protocol to synchronize your system with your organization time server use. NTP protocol to make sure that uh, all these devices following same time rule. Okay, same time, same under the same time zone, they should get a same time. Okay, that is NTP protocol to synchronize the time between the time server and the client. We use NTP protocol. Kerberos and LDAP are used for authentication protocols. Kerberos port number is 88. LDAP port number is 389. This Kerberos protocol mainly used in Active Directory, Microsoft Active Directory services. SNMP protocol, simple network management protocol. Guys, you have an infrastructure. In the infrastructure, you have a server, storages, network, networking components like this. You have it in your organization including some of the desktops ip telephones laptops are connected you want to monitor all these uh, devices what is their status whether turn on turn off device uh, cpu utilization ram utilization load on the servers load on the applications status of the networks we can able to monitor from the monitoring device that is we have seen I think in op manager in the service desk. OK, so which protocol helps to get that information from the client to server is SNMP protocol. OK, so these are the protocols are more useful, repeated, generally important in the network. And always we should remember these protocols and their purposes and the port numbers. Remember the protocols. Remember their purpose of the protocol and the port numbers are important, guys. You want to survive in the techno technical field like a networking related or maybe a cloud related or server related kind of stuff. So this is uh, port numbers and protocols are also an important factor here along with other important things. Okay. 
once again http 80 https 443 both are for web communication https encryption https or ssl so it is data is encrypted in http no encryption ftp protocol general by default ftp protocol 2021 port number no encryption used to upload or download to files to remote system remote server of course for uploading and downloading file purposes ssh telnet rtp r3 remote access purpose ssh and telnet cli based and to use it to connect a remote server with the ssh and telnet to configure it okay to connect maintain configuration kind of stuff ssh is 22 and it is data is encrypted here telnet is by default 23 and data is not encrypted rdp is used to connect a remote desktop systems using rdp protocol smtp pop3 and imap these three protocols are used to communicate to use for a, a mail communication related smtp for sending pop3 imap for Receiving purpose. PFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, port number is 69. Use it to upload, download, backup the remote configuration files. DHCP Protocol, port number 6768. Use it to assign an IP address to the client devices. Okay, DNS which gives an IP address of uh, remote servers based on your name given. OK, so for example, you given a uh, mail.google.com for a gmail.com. What is DNS will do? It will returns an IP address of mail.gmail.com servers. OK, NTP, Network Time Protocol used for synchronizing time to your device to the time server. Kerberos LDAP protocols use it for authentication and authorization in the net. SNMP, simple network management protocol, is it to monitor and checking the status of your systems and stuff also possible. Port number 6768. Added some port numbers, which is also we are regularly using nowadays. That is MySQL. You have a MySQL remote server. You want to create it. You need to use server IP address along with the port number 3360. You want to connect Oracle DB applic application via the Oracle DB server. I want to connect it. So through the network, I have to use a TNS listener port number called a 1521. I have a Tomcat application which is running my website. So then it is by default use port number 88. Okay. So this is a protocols and the port numbers. The next thing is yeah, guys understand different protocols, port numbers, and their purposes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So next one is we are going to be explain one by one. Um, layer wise, we can able to explain. So what you do, just take and relax for a five minutes. Just five minutes. Why? Because of just I, I told about seven layers and the protocols. So need a refreshing. Just you, you need a refreshing part. I don't require, but just five minutes relax. Come back at 430. Then we'll go for a one by one explanation. Come back by 430. 